John, let me move. Uh, tell us a little bit about CSUSA, Charter School USA. Well, I founded the organization in 1997, uh, two years after I worked for Jeb's foundation. Uh, charter schools really got founded uh, under the help of Jeb Bush at that time. I actually worked in his foundation. We helped write kind of the policy recommendations in the legislation. Uh, then soon after, we founded the first charter school called the Liberty City Charter School, an inner city school down in um, Miami-Dade County in partnership with the Urban League. Was that the one in Liberty City with T. Willard Fair? Yes, um, it was uh, focused on inner city kids and helping bring them out of uh, really low performing academic performance and it was very successful. So, so the viewers understand, what role does a management company play in the establishment of a charter school? Well, similar to how a superintendent and staff works for a school board, uh, we're kind of the superintendent and staff. We do all the job. The school board really represented under a charter where there's an actual board and that board hires us, whether it's a municipality, a university, a nonprofit foundation. And then what we do is we come in and actually develop the school from soup to nuts. We help build the school, we help operate the school, we hire the teachers, we put the curriculum in place, we actually even have our own software division. So let's, let's start with the education piece. Uh, what kind of results have you been experiencing in your schools? Well, we have all kinds of schools, so one of the things that's nice is that we take kids that are in uh, the lowest performing areas as well as in high performing areas. They're open enrollment schools, and we take those kids wherever they come in and actually bring them up uh, several grade levels. Um, we took schools that were actually F schools and brought them to A schools within three years. Overall, as a school district, if you were to look at our schools, we're actually an A school district. And how many schools are included in the CSUSA family of schools? We have about 20 schools and about 15,000 kids, and you know those schools represent and everything from uh, low performing free and reduced lunch schools where you have a high level of uh, low performing academically challenged students to suburban areas like Coral Springs and, and, and there's really an attraction across the board for parents not regardless because they want an alternative. Give, uh, give the, the viewers a little sampling of some of the schools that CSUSA runs. Well, we run the Coral Springs Charter School for almost 10 years now, and it's a high-performing school. It's had its, uh, in its sixth year as an A-plus school. It's actually the highest-performing public school in Broward County today. Uh, that school is a 6th through 12th grade school, 1,600 kids, and nearly 2,000 students on the waiting list. It's a great facility, too. Uh, that was before it was a charter school. Wasn't that the, the old Coral Springs Mall? Yeah, I remember as a teenager actually uh, traipsing through the place. It's now a charter school. We uh, converted the mall. It was actually real estate deal of the year that year that we did that and uh, converted what was a white elephant into a really functional school. And in that, in that uh, arrangement, uh, your partner was the city of Coral Springs? That's right. They're still uh, our client. Um, we have other cities like the city of Aventura, the city of Palm Bay. We also have foundation boards. We even partner with universities and community colleges. You, you have schools only in Broward? No, we have schools throughout the state. We have schools um, outside Disney World. We have schools on the West Coast, East Coast, all the way up to the Space Coast and down into Homestead. Let's redirect the attention a little bit to um, um, how you develop uh, plans for these schools. Uh, take us through um, what CSUSA does to identify a potential opportunity to put a school uh, in a particular place and then move it forward to a school opening. Yeah, two things really drive uh, whether or not people want charter schools and if there's enough demand. Academic performance in the marketplace and uh, a number of student stations available. In other words, is, is there overcrowding? In our case, we really look at both things. Sometimes it's just a matter that low-performing schools mean parents want an option. In other cases, it's because the existing schools are overcrowded. They haven't built them fast enough in the school district. Maybe they're sitting in portables. We like to try to find both if possible. Uh, we have school districts across the state that are challenged with both of those problems. And we're finding that expanding outside of Florida now, too. Okay, and where, the, where is that expansion taking place outside? We're currently uh, already operating in Atlanta. We have multiple charters being approved right now. We hope to open up schools by next year, and we're looking in the North Carolina space. Talk to us about some of the unique financing. Um, how do, where, where does the money come from to, let's deal with the opening, the capital monies to open the actual charter school? Yeah, what's nice is we use private money to help build these schools and then we run them with public money. So the actual public benefit is pretty substantial. Not only are you getting a higher performing school, you're getting a, a school at about half the price of what a traditional public school costs the taxpayer. In our case, what we're doing is we're going to Wall Street, we're going to banks, and they're quite attracted by this model and coming to the table to find a good return on investment for them. We'll actually find a community that a fit makes sense and then build that school, finance it separate from the state's balance sheet, which really helps taxpayers. And has uh, the recent um, 
liquidity crisis on Wall Street or with banks impacted your ability to finance these schools? No, in a weird way, it's actually helped us. Uh, we're kind of counter-cyclical uh, as the uh, market looks, looks for less risk. Uh, they look for options like schools, you know, uh, mom and pie, uh, mom, pop, and apple pie kind of things that really uh, produce every year students that aren't going to go away because the, 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 the real estate market's down a little bit. Now, John, prior to the opening of the school uh, year this year, uh, did you, you had a, a get-together over in Fort, Fort Myers. Uh, how many people showed up to that? We had about 1,200 teachers. Uh, the lieutenant governor stopped by, gave us a great uh, speech and a lot of support. Uh, we also have national uh, acclaimed uh, writers, authors, and speakers come in every year. Um, we actually gave our first national awards away for Teacher of the Year, and it made press across the state. So it was a good way to start the school year. It was a great way. They all get motivated. The teachers get focused on the goal, and people go out and really you know, affect children, which is, at the end of the day, what we're about. We're student first. Before we wrap up, what, what's the future of charter schools? I think it's great because, you know, the public school system continues to be challenged by academic and financial constraints. And the private enterprise system can really affect that if it's in partnership with public education. We still need good regulation, but we need private enterprise to come in and assist with better efficiencies and better outcome management. And what we're really doing is building something that is a platform that literally, literally can go beyond national borders. We're already seeing other countries uh, taking this idea and trying to implement it. And, and let me refocus as we close. What kind of edu educational results are you getting? Yeah, we're an A-plus school district, you know, and that speaks for itself. At the end of the day, we're measured the same way public schools are. We meet and exceed their standards, and we do it with half the money. So I think it's a great deal. I think that's a good place to end. Thank you. John, thank you. Thank you, Ed.